Hey guys, in this tutorial, we are gonna talk about SimpliCage. A Blender add-on that helps you generate physics-ready cages and collision meshes for your models. First, let's take a look at the interface. We start by selecting the object we want to make the cage for. You can click on the input to open the list or use the eyedropper. The single bone mode is used when you want to generate a cage for a single bone, or multiple cages for multiple bones at once. The chain mode is used to generate a single cage for multiple bones. And the vertex group is used to generate a cage based on a vertex group. It can be useful when you don't have an armature on the object. Under the modes, you can find the type of cage you want to generate. None means it will only generate the cage without additional steps or features. Cloth means it will be a deforming cage with a cloth physics modifier on the cage, and a surface deform modifier on the body that will be tied to the cage. Collision means it will be a colliding cage with a collision modifier on it. Now let's take a look at the advanced settings. Coverage defines how much area the cage will cover. For example, if you select a bone that drives the arm from the shoulder to the elbow. Setting the coverage to 1 will cover the entire area from the shoulder to the elbow. A lower value means it will cover less area. Resize scale will define how big the cage will be, where a value of 1 will generate a cage that is exactly the same size as the body area. Close cage mesh is used to close the generated mesh. You can choose between different algorithms for that. But the best options are convex hull and fill grid hull. Convex hull is a less accurate but rarely fails. Fill grid hull has a better accuracy but fails sometimes on small object-like fingers. Generally speaking you need to be flexible on this particular choice. For example if the fill grid hull fails and convex hull is not accurate enough. You can choose to disable the close cage mesh and the remesh settings, it will generate a cage that will have the same topology as the main mesh. Which is sometimes the best option. Remesh is an important part of the process, because a clean mesh will perform better than an intricate one. This ball mesh for example is made of disconnected polygons. So simulating this mesh in Blender or using it directly as a collider, is asking for trouble. That's why we need to create a cleaner mesh around the ball and to do that we need the remesh option. Resolution controls how dense the generated cage will be. We found out that around 300 faces is the sweet spot for most applications. The seed value tells Blender to try another edge flow to remesh the object. The clean selection option is used to produce cages with clean and uniform boundaries. The higher the threshold is, the more aggressive the cleanup will be. Smooth correction is used to smooth deforming cages. It will add a smooth corrective modifier below the cloth modifier on the generated cage. This is generally a good practice for deforming cages because it will yield cleaner simulations. Alright, now let's talk about the pin group. The pin group is the area that holds the cage in its place during a simulation. It is also the setting that controls the stiffness of certain areas. It is a vertex group that you can weight paint to tell Blender which area should be static and which area should be dynamic during a simulation. SimpliCage automatically generates a pin group for deforming cages. You can use these settings to tweak the process. If you choose to enable use proximity distance, SimpliCage will pin the areas that intersect with the object or the body. The factor determines how sensitive it's gonna be. Normalization is an activation function that will process the weights and output a more suitable weight diffusion for the cage. The gain is used to amplify the weights, while min sets the minimum weight value that the cage will have. 
Think of these settings like a set of tools just to give you a head start on the weight painting job. Because most of the time you need to fix the weight painting manually to achieve great results. You should keep in mind that the only thing getting influenced by these settings is the weight painting on the pin group. The parenting section controls mainly the work done on the body. The form method lets you choose which modifier is going to be used to tie the cage to the body. Based on our own experience, surface deform is 99% of the time the right choice. Fix influence is a handy option to fix a well-known issue with cages. When the body part doesn't follow the cage exactly, we can enable this option to fix it. It will duplicate the vertex group used for the surface deform modifier and amplify the weights of the vertices. Smooth correction adds a smooth corrective modifier on the body and limits its influence to the area of the cage. The preset system is a replacement for the default preset system of the cloth modifier. Because the one that comes with Blender doesn't retain all the values. This will do, you can save, load files, and there is also a button that opens the folder where the presets are stored so you can share them too. Manage cages lists all of the cages that are on your scene. You can control the visibility, delete cages, change the simulation range. You can also use it to disable the modifiers on the cage. This is helpful when you have simulations that are not baked yet and you want to navigate through the timeline. You should also disable cages when you are animating, otherwise, it will impact the performance of your viewport. Alright, now let's see how to use this tool. Here we have an animation of a character taking a penalty. As you can see only the characters are animated. We are gonna use SimpliCage to simulate the ball and the goal net. Let's inspect the object first. The ball has no armature so we need to select the vertex group mode and make a vertex group that will cover the entire mesh. After that, we select the ball as the main mesh and locate the vertex group we just made. We also select the cloth mode because it will be simulated. Then we jump to the advanced settings. Since it's a ball and the mesh we selected is already closed. We need to disable the close cage mesh. Coverage will not have any influence if you don't weight paint the vertex group because all the vertices you selected on the vertex group have a weight value of 1. Let's try generating a cage with these settings. Okay, one thing you can notice is that the cage is a bit bigger than the ball. If you want to make the cage exactly the same size as the ball you need to set the resize scale to 1. Looking good so far. Next, we select the plane underneath the ball and add a collision modifier to it. So the ball can collide with it. I already made a physics preset for the ball. You can find it on the official Discord channel. Link is in the description. We select the cage and choose the soccer ball preset. Okay, looking good so far. Now let's jump to the goal net. We start by inspecting the object, it has no armature and the mesh is not manifold which means that the vertices are not all connected to each other. We need to go through the same steps like we did with the ball. We create a vertex group that will tell SimpliCage what to cover, in this case the entire goal net. Then we choose the goal net as the main mesh, the vertex group, the cloth mode and jump to the advanced settings. For this particular case we need to choose convex hull because fill grid hull will most likely fail. And after that, we need to finish the job manually, which means edit the cage mesh and also the weight painting. Let's edit the cage first. Select the cage of the goal net and go to edit mode. Then we are going to select and delete all the vertices that are not needed. In this case the front and the base. Otherwise, the ball will not be able to enter the cage. If you ever change the vertices count of a cage like we did here, you need to rebind the surface deform modifier. So select the goal net, go to modifiers, Unbind the surface to form and bind it again. Now, if we hit play the goal net should follow the cage we just created. Now the weight painting part. Select the cage and go to weight paint mode. And make sure that the pin vertex group is selected. Now we need to paint the areas that will hold the cage in its place. In this case, 
we need to follow the metallic structure because that's what the goal net is tied to. You can also do that using the edit mode. Select the vertices that must be pinned and assign them to the pin vertex group. Okay, now since the ball and the goal net cages need to interact with each other, we need to apply a collision modifier to both. The collision modifiers should come after the cloth modifier. The last step is to add a collision mesh on the character that will be responsible for kicking the ball. So first we select the character mesh using the eyedropper tool. Then, we choose the chain mode since we are going to select more than one bone and we only need a single cage for the job. We also need to choose the collision mode. And set a low resolution because it will be more efficient to do so. As you can see, we choose not to close the mesh on this cage. Because it doesn't really matter for a collision mesh unless the add-on is failing to generate one. Sometimes you also have to disable both the remesh option and the close cage mesh if you want for example to create a collision mesh for a hand. Because the fingers will most likely be fused up if you choose convex hull and the remesh option. So you need to try different setups to see what's the best option for the situation. Alright, now, let's check out the results. So far so good. The only problem is that the ball goes through the goal net. Two things may be causing that. Either the single-sided option of the collision modifier is the issue or we simply don't have enough collision substeps on the cloth modifier. It's called quality and you can find it under the collision section of the cloth modifier. Alright, I hope you find this tutorial useful. You can find the link of this add-on in the description. I also included the Blender file. Stay tuned for more and I will see you next time.